In order to find the intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing, we actually have to first find the critical numbers of the function. And recall that to find the critical numbers, you must compute the derivative of the function, f prime of x. Since this function is the product of x squared and the natural log of x, we will have to use the product rule to compute the derivative. Recall that the product rule states that the derivative is equal to the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 divided by x, plus the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first function. The derivative of x squared is 2x. We can simplify this by canceling out one of the x's because we have x squared in the numerator and x in the denominator. So we're left with x plus 2x times the natural log of x. To proceed in finding the critical numbers, we have to set the derivative equal to 0. To solve this equation, we need to factor out an x. And then we can set each factor equal to 0. Let's go ahead and solve this second equation by subtracting 1 and then dividing by 2, leaving us with the natural log of x equals negative 1 half. And then the base of the natural log is e, so to convert this logarithmic form into exponential form, we can raise the base to the other side of the equation. So x equals e raised to the negative 1 half. This is our first critical number. On the other side, we have x equals 0 as a critical number. But if you go back and plug 0 into the original function, you would find that you get an error because the natural log of 0 is undefined. So this is not even part of the domain of the function, and therefore we need to exclude it as one of our critical numbers. After finding the critical numbers, we have to plot them on a number line in order to determine where the function is increasing and decreasing. So let's go ahead and plot our critical number on the number line. And we will choose values that are less than as well as greater than this critical value and plug them into the derivative to determine what that tells us about the given function. Now on the calculator, e to the negative one half is approximately 0.6. So let's choose something that's less than that, such as 0.5, and something that is greater than that, such as 1. We'll go ahead and plug in 0.5 into our derivative. And you can use your calculator to do that. You're going to plug it into the derivative, which is x plus 2x times the natural log of x. If you plug 0.5 into the derivative, you should get a negative result. It doesn't actually matter what the specific value is. We're only looking for whether it's negative or positive. Similarly, if you plug 1 into the derivative, you should obtain a positive result. Now, when the derivative is negative, that tells us that the function is decreasing. When the derivative is positive, that tells us that the function is increasing. And so we are actually able to solve the intervals on which this function is increasing or decreasing by looking at our number line. Remembering that the domain of the function begins at 0, we can write the following interval. From 0 all the way up to e raised to the negative 1 half, the function is decreasing. And from e to the negative 1 half on to infinity, the function is increasing. And we've actually killed two birds with one stone because part b asks us to find the local maximum and minimum values of the function. We can see by the direction of the arrows that the function gradually decreases and then when it hits e to the negative one half it suddenly turns around and begins to increase again. That visually is a minimum of the function. So we can state that the function f has a local minimum at x equals e to the negative one half. Now we should also find the y-coordinate of the minimum since it is a point. So to find the y-coordinate of the minimum, you plug e to the negative one-half into the original function, not into the derivative. So the original function, recall, was x squared multiplied by the natural log of x. Let's plug e to the negative one-half into the original function and see what we obtain. We have an exponent raised to an exponent, so the rules dictate that we can multiply those exponents. So we're left with e to the negative one and this might look rather complicated. You could actually plug that into your calculator if you wish, and the calculator would return a value of negative one-half. So the y-coordinate is negative one over two 
e to the positive first power. We can change the negative power to a positive power by shifting the e into the denominator. So your x-coordinate of your local minimum is e to the negative one-half, or if we want to write the exponent as a positive exponent, it would be 1 over e to the positive one-half. And the y-coordinate is right here. So we've al already answered parts A and B. Let's go on to answer part C. Part C is asking us to find the intervals of concavity and the inflection points. And it turns out that we can proceed in a rather similar way as we did when finding the intervals on which the function was increasing or decreasing. In order to find the intervals of concavity, however, we have to compute the second derivative. So we can go through and do that right now. The derivative of x is 1. Now here you have to be careful because you have a product again. You have 2x multiplied by the natural log of x. So we'll have to use the product rule again. The product rule states that the derivative of the function is the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function plus the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first function. Let's go ahead and algebraically clean this up. We can cancel the x's as well as move this 2 out into the front. And then, of course, we can combine the 1 and the 2. To move further, we're going to set the second derivative equal to 0 and solve for x. So to solve this equation, we can subtract 3 and then divide by 2. And then, just like before, we have the base e here, so we're going to raise that to the other side of the equation. And we see that x is equal to e raised to the negative 3 halves. This is not technically a critical number, but we can still use it on a number line to determine the intervals of concavity. So let's go ahead and plot that value on a number line. On a calculator, we see that e raised to the negative 3 halves is approximately 0.22. So when we test values to plug into the second derivative, we actually want to maybe use uh, 0.1 and, and perhaps 1 again. And in this case, on the number line analysis, you're going to be plugging in your test values into the second derivative. So we're going to find f double prime of 0.1 and f double prime of 1 and see what we obtain. You can use a calculator and see that this comes out to be a negative answer and this comes out to be a positive answer. Remember, you're plugging it into the second derivative. Now, the fact that it, the second derivative is negative tells us that the function is concave down. We're not going to write a downward pointing arrow. We're going to actually write almost like an upside down parabola to indicate that the function is concave down on the left side of our e to the negative 3 halves. And then the second derivative came out positive on the right side of e to the negative 3 halves. So the function is concave up. And now we're going to be able to write our intervals of concavity using the number line analysis. We can come up here to do so. So we can do concave down first, and the function is concave down from 0 up to e to the negative 3 halves. Function will be concave up from e to the negative 3 halves to infinity. And since the concavity changes at this point right here, at x equals e to the negative 3 halves, we can note that that is in fact our inflection point. So the inflection point occurs at x equals e to the negative 3 halves. Inflection points occur anytime the concavity changes. To find the y coordinate we would plug e to the negative 3 halves into the original function over here. And doing so returns a value of negative 3 halves e to the negative 3. If you have any trouble with that, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to follow up. So here is the coordinates of the inflection point.